the love affair I've had with photography. It's been total commitment and, and I've actually not taken any shortcuts to do it. I've worked very hard in my life and uh, printed all my own pictures, you know, supervised my books and things. So, you know, for, for a, a little ignorant boy who grew up in North London, you know, I feel quite pleased looking back that I managed to grow to where I've arrived at in my life today. For over half a century, Don McCullen has been one of the great figures in photography. His iconic images of conflict and crisis made him a legend. He's also become known for his extraordinary work in portraiture and landscapes. But until now, there's one thing he's never shot, digital. This is the story of his journey into new technology and the discoveries that come with it. Don's come to the south of France, where, over the next few days, he'll be introduced to the Canon EOS 5D Mark III camera and Canon EF lenses, and given the opportunity to put them to the test in a whole range of settings and conditions. And here am I at nearly 77, about to embark on a totally new technical journey, really. I'm not good at technical things. I, uh, I have my limits. But I'm willing to learn. Don's guide into the digital world is Jeff Askoff. Jeff is a Canon ambassador and one of the world's most highly rated wedding photographers. There's only one thing to be said about these cameras, only one word I kind of fear in them, and it, the word is called seduction. <laughs> yes. They are there <laughs> to seduce me away from the, the very safe world I understand and know and to take me on a new journey and make me kind of do different things. My only hope is that I don't fall in love with this equipment and then I go away and make a huge mistake and, and totally change the kind of the character of my work. I think that comes from the photographer though. I think this is just a, um, a, just a tool at the end of the day. Um, I think the photographer's eye is, it doesn't matter what it's shot on, it's just that that's what makes the photographer, for me anyway. The difference between you and I is, is that you've actually adapted because you, this is the, you know, the world that you'll, you'll have to work in now. And mm. you know, for me to change from what I did for 50 odd years to come to this, I mean, can I do this in half a day? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, the, yeah, you, I mean, you can do, you'll be taking pictures um, easily. Um, just with some basic settings put onto the camera. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you get more confident with the camera, then you, you may want to explore the other settings. Yeah. Um, but it's fairly simple to set the thing up um, so that you can take whatever photographs yeah. you want to take yeah. at any time yeah. at the moment. Hey, look, I think the best thing is you tell me how to switch this thing on. OK. Um, everything is controlled by buttons on the back so it's basically switch the camera on it's just basically that goes over mm -hmm. now the camera is on okay, okay. Um, your aperture and everything is controlled by the finger that, wheel here yeah, okay. so if you want to go up and down in your aperture yeah. that's what it's controlled by yeah. when it comes to actually setting the focus what we recommend is that you use the the AF on button here. Yeah, that's an automatic focus. That's right, yeah. yeah. So th with that, uh, with a lot of people use a shutter release to focus. Um, the problem with that is that every time that you press the shutter release, it will try and focus all the time. Oh, I see. So if you press the AF on button. And then, then shoot. That just, yeah. it, it's focused, then you can shoot. Okay, let's see if we can just have a go at this portrait. Let me see how close I can get there, isn't it? Oh, I have to do this. Oh, it's not bad, really. Now Don has the camera in his hands, he's keen to put it through its paces with a rather more photogenic model and a 100mm macro lens. I could get to like doing this. It's so sharp, this. It's amazing. It's the, this is about the beauty of the beast, this is, this picture. Okay, 
feel like Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> The next day, Jeff takes Don out, armed with the 100mm macro lens and a 28mm. Where you're going to find pictures, you know, so you're going around in a car all the time. This is the first time I've used this camera in a street situation, which is one of my places where I really love working in streets, in, you know, in real environments. When you shove this camera up to your face and you press that button, and then you press the following you know, shutter button, the speed is phenomenal. Mm. You know, I've never had the, the opportunity to have such speed of focus. Getting on with the lenses. Oh, this this is amazing. This lens. Yeah. I can't miss really. I, I mean, I just cannot. And this is the speed I can use this lens. Is um, it's revolutionised my ability. I think this this lens is the, the most amazing thing I've ever handled. Really. Oh, fantastic. I'm not saying that just because we're talking about cannons. I'm saying it because it is. I think the biggest problem about digital f f cameras, shall we say, is. I see so many people doing it, professionals and amateurs alike. They take the picture, they look at the, they take the picture, they look. Um, I think it's intolerable that way of, you know, it's not a professional way of behaving. I, I'm very happy to look through the viewfinder on these digital cameras and, and be patient and wait until I'm satisfied that I need, you know, to check it all out. But some people do it almost every frame. And what they don't realize is that by taking their eye from the subject matter, from that viewfinder, is losing slightly the control of the, the, the preconception of what's going on in front of you. You must not lose control of what's happening up there. The moment you look down there at your image, you're, you're losing, there's a separation, you know. That is a discipline that I will guarantee I will not, you know, will give up. been here for probably about an hour or so taking pictures. How many would you like to get that you'd be really happy with from in that sort of time frame? If you're talking about really good pictures, one. One, okay. I'd be quite happy to walk away from this market with one good picture because that means, you know, I would have achieved, you know, my goal. But the truth is, I know I've got several good pictures. What's extraordinary about this is the clarity when you look through the viewfinder, mm. you know. Yeah. I can yeah. see like as if I haven't got a camera, it's like I'm there with my own eyes. So it's um I haven't seen the results of this yet, so I can't say, but I'm almost sure it's gonna be extraordinary. We're gonna sit down now, can't we? Yeah, I think so. We can have a rest for five minutes. As Don and Jeff move on to the nearby port and beach, however, photo opportunities are harder to come by. So I'll ring up rent a crowd then, I think. Get a few people down here. The sky for me is interesting, but it needs to be a lot more interesting than this, because you can still make a great picture out of emptiness. It's not, not um, coming up trumps. I know what's going to happen on this project. We're going to have some days where we have a struggle. We did it right this morning, and then you get another day when we pile it on, you know. Yeah. It's also a try to overcome challenge as well, yeah. you know, because this can't expect to. Just get your own way all the time in photography, you don't normally. On the way back to base, though, the light suddenly changes, and Don is quick to take advantage. We can walk away from this whole project, one, one astonishing picture. Look it out. Get out. My philosophy in photography is basically the light governs the whole outcome of your image, it creates the atmosphere. Even when the light's very bad or it's raining, I've still photographed. I believe in battling against the elements purely to keep and create that atmosphere. The clouds are extraordinary. I mean, we, we got our asses kicked a bit today, but this is really making up for it. The light is your friend and it can be your enemy. So I personally go along with it.
At the end of the day, Don and Jeff sit down to review what's been shot. I've got to do better than this. One of the things you can do is... Take that sky down. Yeah, they've got a, like a graduated filter mm -hmm. thing, which mm -hmm. is one of these things. You can quite find it. Yeah, see, if there was a great sky there, that picture would be much more interesting. OK, so if you watch the sky now... <laughs> I just see that's extraordinary. Yeah. That's what I would like to have found in the first place, but it wasn't yeah. like that at all. You see, if I have to rely upon, you know, going, coming down to, you know, injecting, I, it makes you feel slightly guilty of not doing it. Um, I, I, I would counter that and say, well, obviously the, the, the digital sensor can't take in everything that the human eye can take mm -hmm. in in terms mm -hmm. of the tones, mm -hmm. but with the, with the software you can mm -hmm. do that. No, I only ever take pictures of a great sky as if I'm, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Some of the skies I've done in the past, my past life of film, if I had this camera and I could inject the way you inject, you know, I'd make some extraordinary prints. Having had a taste of what the equipment can do, Don wants to go out again with one of his favourite lenses, the 135mm. There are, you know, stubborn people like me around who, you know, think, you know, it's too late to move on. But maybe I'm thinking it's not. Well, you've seen how quickly you've picked this up. Yeah. I reckon given a couple of weeks shooting, you'll be right up to speed with it. Will I? Photographers have to challenge themselves. Yeah, I if agree. If you don't challenge yourself, you become lazy and you, your work will show. You, you know, you can easily spot lazy photographers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 800, okay. you'd be fine, okay? okay? Fine. So when you go inside 32, outside 800, that's, oh, that's a good rule of thumb, okay? Okay, that's a very good rule for me, actually. But it's nice though, isn't it? You feel like there's life going on here. You know? Oh, look, this is my picture. Oh, no, that's all right, you carry on. See him, did you? There he comes. <laughs> Should we take off then? Yeah, it's so yeah, good here. Works, I, I could stay here all day and get good pictures. They're characters, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, very good. I had such a nice time using that 13.5 today. The other one, the macro, is a great lens, and I love it for uh, portraiture, but the 13.5, it, it comes back to the lens I've always used. The other thing I've enjoyed most of all is pressing that button at the back to get the focus. It's made the whole difference to my kind of experience. I, I just do it so quickly. For the past 20 years, Don has turned much of his photographic attention to landscapes. So he and Jeff head out into the French countryside. I took a, a great interest in English landscape photography because I'd seen so much tragedy and war, so much misery and pain and suffering, it began to damage me. If it didn't, I wouldn't be a really, you know, straightforward, normal human being. I would be a monster. So therefore, you know, I came back from these wars, I'd seen too much, and then I needed to release this kind of pain and this tension that was building in me. I started doing my landscapes. People started saying nice things about them. Even, <laughs> they used to often say at the same time, why are they so dark? Of course, the simple reason when it comes down to it is that I'm dark. You know, war made me dark, a dark person. I had no reason to go around smiling and being bubbly, you know, and happy and joyful. You know, the, uh, war gave me something, but it took something away from me. Luckily, it didn't take my life away.
I must confess I'm being persuaded that it might be time for me to, to change. Normally I'm doing landscape, I'm, I'm traipsing across bitterly cold fields and early mornings and um, with heavy equipment, you know, and I'm, because I'm not getting any younger, I need the kind of technology that can still allow me to, you know, battle against my age and the elements and yet still come away with the picture. I've seen already, you know, what this lens I'm using can do. It's really extraordinary. It's a 24 millimeter lens, the latest technology. It's light. I've seen, you know, what it's capable of. It's quite extraordinary. I've got some good pictures this morning. I know that when we take them back and we stick them on the computer screen, we can enhance them and, and make them the way I, I, I would like to see them. That's the joy of this new technology. Yeah, that's lovely. Because it, it, it just oh, yeah, probably lightens a bit. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, if I was in the dark, then that's the way I'd print it. Do you want more contrast than that? No. Are you happy no, with the contrast? No, I think I'm very happy with that, actually. If that comes out on that lovely paper next door, yeah. I think it's fine. I mean, it's really... God, you've made a print in about five minutes that would take me like half a bloody day. <laughs> in my dark room, you know, I'd be washing and hanging about. And, you know, it's really beautiful, thank you. It's an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Absolute pleasure. That's what, this is what I like, is you, you give it so much kind of help. Yeah. I'd have to be using the old wagger stick for that, you see. Yeah. Wagging it away. Wagging it away and trying to keep it back and everything, yeah, I know. This whole technology has been totally corrupted. Glasses of wine, <laughs> glasses of wine, corruptive kind of technology, the whole thing. No, it's beautiful, thank you. I'm really pleased about that. Yeah, it's amazing. The next morning, Don decides to relax after a long day in the field by shooting a digital still life for the very first time. I've gathered some more fruit and some wine bottles and a rather a lovely miniature painting of a Georgian woman. I've brought them into this really darkened old wine store, I suppose that's what you could describe it as, and uh, I'm trying to find out what these cameras can do. Can they deal with this darkness and still remain sharp? Okay. I don't know if that's sharp, but... Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's sharp. Just, I mean, you know, we've got no light in here. I really need to bring some, some reflection here, you see. So that means if I leave that door open, so I can use the reflector here. I've been quite mean over the years how I use film and paper. I've always thought it was such a, a beautiful, uh, you know, a, a discovery in, in, in man's life to discover this, this, this wonderful sensitive material. I've always treated it with the utmost respect, so I would never use paper as if you could just, oh, I'll throw that away, I can get another sheet. That's because you get the field preview. Now, if I'm gonna transfer myself and walk across that bridge to the digital world, I'm gonna be exactly the same. I'm still gonna treat it as if every shot is important. This lens I've used as a 50 millimeter, the only problem with such a lens, which is normally the standard lens on most cameras, you know, its depth of field is limited. If you're doing a thing like a still life, you would need a, a, a layers of depth of field, so you would be really wanting to stop down to f16. You can only do that by using the ISO on this at 3200. Yeah. You know, can you imagine if you were trying to shoot that on 400 ASA film. Okay, that's fine. I suppose because I've used the camera this week in one way or another, different circumstances, 
and conditions that I wasn't surprised to discover that it, it really is extraordinary. If I was to start again in, where I, in one of my own environments in, back in England, you know, I could make a guarantee to make a, a beautiful picture and make a 30 by 40 print, you know, and it'll be needle, needle sharp. Don has produced a book on Roman ruins, so he's especially keen to visit the Pont du Gard near Nîmes, the world's largest aqueduct. The kind of photograph I'm trying to take would be a classical picture of, of this beautiful structure, but you know, there's too many restrictions on my movements. Really, one should come here very early in the morning when the sun rises so that you can get the very best of the molding and the structure of this amazing monument. One of the things about coming to a place like this with this kind of equipment, you know, the people think you're photographing the structure and I can really pounce on people and, you know, get that, that the unobtrusive moment where I can catch people, you know, enjoying their day or doing what they're doing, and they won't even know I'm doing it. Not with this 24 millimeter lens, which I can, you know, I can get them and I can get all the people around them quite easily. It's a lens I wish I'd have had many years ago. But this idea of just pressing this button at the back and, you know, guaranteeing, you know, the sharpness of my negatives or my image, you know. It's just released me from, from a, a prison sentence of focusing. I've crossed over this enormous technical bridge into the digital camera world, using these Canon cameras. It's been a week of experimentation and learning for me. I've now got to make up my mind I'm rather late in my years, at the age of 77, to suddenly change my whole operation. It's going to need a, you know, a really strong decision. I've been working with a nice man here, uh, Jeff, uh, who's been uh, really helping me and guiding me. And to him, it comes naturally. I'm one of those old dinosaurs that's been using film all his life, and suddenly I've got all this technology at my hands. But it's uh, it's quite, it's phenomenal, you know, I, I've been a skeptic, you know, I'm a man who wouldn't consider using multi-grade paper, I'm using it. I'm making amazing prints, even better prints than I made in, with other papers years and years ago. I'm one of those people, you might say, slow to change. So I think I could probably get a grip of, of the digital world, because to walk in a room used to be a big fear to me in the old days with film. You were worried about the light. Is there enough light to be able to hand held and shoot this picture? More often than not, there wasn't. It was all purely by luck, which, you know, what spoonful of light you would have been given that day. But now I can walk into almost pitch darkness with these new Canon cameras and, uh, you know, shoot by candlelight if I have to. You know, it's extraordinary to think I've been liberated from that fear of, is there enough light? These cameras have been made to defy any challenge that's thrown at you. You know, they can do anything, these cameras. It's a tragedy I'm so old that, you know, I couldn't embark on the career I've had with th this kind of equipment that would have trebled my, my archival collection of my life's work. It would have trebled it. You know, I would have been allowed to shoot in circumstances which I couldn't back in the old days with films. What I have in mind is to go back to England when I eventually get hold of the camera. I have a working relationship with two camera bodies, a 135 lens and a 28 millimeter lens. They're my preferred working lenses. I can do anything with those two lenses. I shall also undertake to use the 24 millimeter lens purely for my landscape work. And so those three lenses will cover 
all that I expect to do or I've ever expected to do in my photographic life. I, I've still got a bit of life left in me and I still in, will endeavour to, you know, take some interesting photographs. What I'm making is the mistake of pontificating about doing it. One must not think about doing things in life, you must do them.